He says that at this point, should he perceive that fr frivolity, at this point, should he perceive that he has wealth in excess of his needs, he should take it from him and give it in charity in order to empty his heart of it and to prevent him from being distracted. Should he perceive that frivolity, pride, and self-esteem have taken hold of him, he should instruct him to go to the marketplace and beg. Since self-esteem and love of authority can only be broken by humiliation, of which begging is the most intense form. He will, require, he will require him to persist in this for a period until his pride and self-esteem are destroyed. For pride and also frivolity, uh, which is lack of seriousness, are among the illnesses which lead to destruction. Should the sheikh see that the body and dress of the aspirant are usually clean, and that his heart inclines to this and is pleased with it, he will give him a job as a latrine attendant and, a, and cleaner and instruct him to sweep filthy places and to remain in the kitchen in places where there is smoke until the attachment he has, has to cleanliness departs. And this is all a way of training. And once someone's heart becomes enlightened, he doesn't need anyone to tell him to do these things. And one time, one of the recent great Mashaykh of Egypt, Sheikh al-Sha'rawi, that one time he was with his son, and it was just after he gave a talk, and they were going back the way home and he told his son to stop. And he went to a public bathroom and his son just thought he had to use the restroom. And he was in there for a long time. So his son started to get worried for him, worried about him. And came and, and knocked on the door and uh, eventually went in just to see. And he found his father scrubbing the public bathroom, which was probably extremely filthy and smelly and this is Sheikh Sha'rawi, the Sheikh of all of Egypt, the Mufti, the Mufti of, yani, the Sheikh of Azhar, and, the, and, and, and he uh, was in doing this. And his, and his son asked him, you know, why, why he was doing that. And he said he, just gave a, he just, had just given a talk to a whole bunch of people. And he didn't want there to be any type of uh, ta'ali or arrogance entering to his heart for him just giving that talk. So what did he do? Right? That he, he, that's what he did. He lowered himself. And went and cleaned a latrine. Subhanallah. That uh, these are the people of Allah. That's that's the way that they. And no matter what you see outwardly, and you'll see Mashaykh and people of Allah. The asal is the foundation is that you you try to remain hidden, and that you're supposed to bury yourself in the ard al khumul, uh, in the earth of obscurity. You're not supposed to seek leadership. You're not supposed to seek to be known. You're not supposed to seek a place in people's hearts. That's the foundation. And then if Allah Ta'ala manifests that individual, then when it's without any desire from his own soul, then he'll be given tawfiq in that. But if he himself desires leadership or desires to be known, then he's, setting him, it's, he's going to be left to himself and he's setting himself up for difficulties. And so the, in, in a similar way, that, that, that people that, uh, that uh, uh, there's some people that you see that they're out and they have a lot of students and they're very well known and, uh, you know, and they even let people kiss their hands, rightly guided scholars and so forth. And someone might think, hmm, how could someone, you know, let that happen to, you know, isn't that arrogance and that type of thing? Not realizing that one, if these people have reached a certain level, that it will be as if they're almost like non-existent to begin with, right? Two is that uh, they will see themselves worse than every single person there. And just know that for sure, that the true rightly guided scholars, no matter how many people are listening to them, no matter how many people are looking to them for guidance, that they'll see themselves worse than everyone else that's there. 